Welcome to a lesson on matching situations to graphs. If you are given a table of data, you can only plot those specific values without connecting them unless the context defines a pattern or rate of change that can be used to accurately define values in between the given data values. And we'll look at two examples of this in just a moment. In the media, graphs are often presented as a solid line in order to show a general trend or to make the graph look more appealing. However, not all the points on the line may make sense in a given situation. In this first situation, let's say a group of people play a game and receive a score from one to four. This graph shows on the horizontal axis a number of people that received a certain score labeled on the vertical axis. Notice in this case, the values in between these points would not make sense because the number of people has to be a whole number and it can't have a fraction or decimal and therefore it would not make sense to connect these points and form a line. And we call this graph a discrete graph because it's just a set of points where the values between the points don't make sense. In the second situation, let's say we turn on a faucet of water and in this graph it shows the number of hours along the horizontal axis and the number of gallons of water along the vertical axis. And let's just say from the data, we had these four red points. In this case, it does make sense to form a line through these four points because, because time is continuous. If we look at the interval from one to two hours, every time between one or two hours would be a valid time with the water flowing, and therefore the points on the line do make sense because it tells us the total number of gallons of water that we would have. So we say this graph is continuous, and we say this is a discrete graph. Now let's look at example one. Example one, we're asked to match the stories with the graphs below and label the axes accordingly. Let's first read the three stories. Story A, Andy is selling snow cones for $3 each. This graph shows the revenue earned from selling the snow cones. Story B, Andrea is saving money for a trip to Disneyland. Every payday, she sets aside $100 for the trip. She gets paid every two weeks. This graph shows the amount of money saved over time. And then finally, story C, Andrew is walking to school. There are no streets to cross, so he is able to walk at a constant rate. This graph shows Andrew's distance from home over time. So here we have a line, here we have a set of points, and here we have several segments where each segment is constant over an interval along the horizontal axis. Now let's go back up to story A. Andy is selling snow cones for $3 each and the graph shows the revenue earned from selling the snow cones. So the key here is recognizing he can't sell a fraction or decimal part of a snow cone. He can only sell a whole number of snow cones, which means the graph of the situation will not be continuous. It will be discrete or a set of points, as we see here. Where the horizontal axis would be the number of snow cones sold, and the vertical axis would be the revenue earned. For every snow cone sold, the revenue is going to increase by $3. For this graph, the values between the points don't make sense because it's not possible for Andy to sell a fractional part of a snow cone. Now let's take a look at story B. Andrea is saving money for a trip to Disneyland. Every paycheck she sets aside $100 for the trip. She gets paid every two weeks. This graph shows the amount of money saved over time. So notice how she's only making a deposit of $100 every two weeks, which means for a time period of two weeks, the amount of savings is going to stay constant, which matches this graph here. We'll notice after the first deposit, she would have $100 in her savings account for a total of two weeks until she makes the next deposit when the savings amount jumps up to $200. After two more weeks and she makes another deposit, the savings amount jumps up to $300 after she makes the $100 deposit which means this graph does match story B, where the horizontal axis, where the horizontal axis would be the number of weeks or days, let's call it weeks, and the vertical axis would be the total amount of money saved over time. And just to keep things organized, again, this was the graph that matched story A, this was the graph that matched story B, so of course that means this graph must match story C. But let's take a look at story C again. Andrew is walking to school, there are no streets to cross, so he's able to walk at a constant rate. This graph shows Andrew's distance from home over time. 
So in this graph, we would have time along the horizontal axis. And let's go ahead and say it's time in minutes. And let's label the vertical axis distance in feet. Notice how this graph is continuous. The reason it makes sense for this graph to be continuous is that if, let's say, it takes Andrew five minutes to walk to school, every time from zero minutes, meaning the time he leaves, to the time he reaches the school, the point on the line has meaning. It tells exactly his distance from home in feet. So because every point on this line does have meaning, the graph is continuous. Now let's look at example two. In example two, we're asked to consider the graph below, and we're asked, do all the points on the graph make sense in the given situation? Looking at this first graph, notice how we have a continuous graph where the horizontal axis gives us the number of candles sold. The vertical axis gives us the profit in dollars. So at first, this graph may seem to make sense because we see graphs like this all the time where here, where the graph is negative, would be when the profit is negative, where there's a loss. And over this interval, the graph is positive because there's a profit. And then the horizontal intercept here would be the number of gallons sold to break even, meaning there's no profit or no loss. But the problem with this graph is the vertical axis gives the number of candles sold, and the number of candles sold can't be a fraction or decimal, it can only be whole numbers. So technically this graph should only be a set of points, not a continuous line. So let's go ahead and say the graph does not make sense. The number of candles can only be a whole number, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The graph should only be a set of points on the Cartesian plane, meaning it should be a discrete graph. I hope you found this helpful.